Police in Missouri continue searching for Lisa Irwin, the 11-month-old baby who disappeared October 4th. Well, her parents have now lawyered up with Joe Tacopina, the man who once represented Euron Vandersloot. So where is the baby? With us now to discuss the case, Tom Ruskin, private investigator, and Rosemary Arnold, criminal defense attorney who worked with baby Lisa's family lawyer now, Joe Tacopina, on that Euron Vandersloot case. And CNN's Jim Spellman joins us as well. And Jim, I want to start with you. I, I heard that the governor now is getting involved in this and something about the National Guard. What's happened? On Sunday, the National Guard uh, were able to deploy 25 troops uh, here to assist with searching areas that already been searched. Difficult terrain, dense woods, they went inch by inch through. We know that, the, uh, that they've told us that if they're needed again, they'll be ready to deploy. So uh, we think that possibly they're going to have more of those troops out here to join the searches. That's exactly what Attorney Joe Tacopino said yesterday he'd like to see more of more of the National Guard out here assisting in these searches. And he really has, since getting on the scene there, gone on a very good offense for this family. Has anything uh, new come out this morning or, or this evening? Well, uh, we do have two things happening right now. A fresh search uh, of an area about a mile, mile and a half here. We, the police uh, evidence van is there. We haven't seen that out for several days. It's there. We don't know exactly what they're looking for. They've closed off a block, but there is a fresh search going there. Also, a CNN affiliate, KNBC, is reporting that in Manhattan, Kansas, about two hours uh, away from here in Kansas City, there was a, a, a possible sighting. They're tracking that down uh, right now. So there is some things happening, and that's exactly what Joe Tacopino wants to see more of and less focus on uh, his client, Deborah Bradley, the mother of baby Lisa. That's right. Rosemary, you've worked with Joe. You know, you know his, his sort of uh, MO. What's he doing down there? What is his first goal? His first goal is to protect that baby and to protect those parents. Mm -hmm. Those people are very simple people, and they're victims. And already in the public eye, in the press, they're being considered as persons of interest in this case, when in fact there's absolutely zero evidence that they did anything, anything whatsoever to harm that baby. Well, hold on a second. You know, when you're the mother of an 11-month-old and you acknowledge that you've gotten drunk, possibly even blacked out, and you say it's because anything after dark is your grown-up time, in my book, you're hurting your baby right there. Well, that might not be the most responsible way to be when you're with your 11-month-old baby, but it doesn't mean she did anything to you're the right. baby. You're and, right. And he's out there to make sure that the investigation is focused on finding that baby, because if they arrest that mother and there is no evidence right now whereby they should be arresting her, the investigation could come to an end. And then they stop looking for this child, who, in this case, really is the victim of everything. To play well, devil's now, advocate yes, here for a minute, do. <laughs> from a police standpoint, yeah. the police reasonably assume the parents may have had something to do with it. Isn't that normally the case? That's, the, always, the vast that's, 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 always, that's always the case, because over history, we know that parents have been involved in abductions as well as kidnappings as well as killing of their own children. But at this point, now, as Rosemary at this said, point there's in no time, evidence you showing can't, that. You can't take anyone off the table as a possible suspect or subject. And the fact of the matter is she changed her story once or twice. Does it make you look at her a little bit differently? Yes, it does. Well, does it mean she's guilty? Absolutely well, not. Well, here's what Joe Tacopina said about that. He said, um, you know, people are making more of this than it is. She's not changing her story as to when she saw her baby last. Mm -hmm. She describes putting the baby to bed at a certain time of night. Obviously, she wasn't clocking that. Again, I'm a simple mom. I know if I have to put the baby to bed at 6.30 or at 10.30. Mm -hmm. And so I know that, that Joe's job is to make this seem as, you know, as harmless and there's nothing to it. But in fact, when time is so crucial here, isn't that a huge inconsistency? It's a huge inconsistency depending on who your subject is, who the mother is. These are, as Rosemary said, very simple people. They come off that way. The, the boyfriend does not seem like a very sophisticated guy. So you have to weigh that in. When you're interviewing them as a police officer or as a detective, or even as a private investigator, what Bill Stanton is doing is trying to determine their credibility for Joe and for their investigation to try and determine what happened here, you have to weigh in the sophistication of the person you're interviewing. Rosemary, uh, Joe said that after he was kind of uncertain about this, and then after spending a lot of time with the family and talking to them, he was now convinced that they didn't have anything to do with it. When you go into a case like this, and you've worked with Joe on, on a very high-profile case uh, such as this, how, how can you determine, and if you've been able to determine it, why haven't the cops? 
Well, Joe must have information, first of all, that he got, and probably from Bill Stanton, that indicates to him that there was not, no foul play on behalf of and the And Bill parents. Stanton is a private investigator, private investigator. very well-known one, who has uh, worked with Joe and is involved in this case. Not to mention, I'm sure Joe spends a lot of time talking to these people, and you can tell by people's visceral reactions to things how really they feel. But really, if you look at all the evidence, there's no evidence that the parents did anything. But there is evidence of other sorts, that someone else did something. You have evidence that there's a window that's tampered mm -hmm. with, and you have evidence that there are lights on and things missing from the house. So there's other evidence, too. To so that, when you let, weigh it... Let's go back out to, to, to Jim in Missouri. What has happened today? I know that yesterday you, you said that there had, been, um, there had been talk about the police going in and removing items from neighbors' homes. Have you learned anything else? Have they, have they gone and, and perhaps questioned other people? We don't know if they've questioned anybody, but uh, one thing they are focusing on is using dogs more in the search. Yesterday, there were dogs out here at the home of baby Lisa and at the next door neighbor. We saw them bringing out bags from the next door neighbor's house. Uh, investigators here insist to us that that is not evidence. It's material related to the dog search. It's been suggested that that is material that may have scent on it that they can then take and use for a dog to smell at another location to see if they get a hit off it on that other location. At the search that's going on right now, a few miles from here, we do know that they're using dogs, and when they searched that area previously, they hadn't used dogs. So they are ramping up investigations like that, but they tell us none of it is based on new lead or leads or new information. Mm -hmm. We don't have any reason to believe they've interviewed anybody new. That is what is so frustrating about this, Tom, you know, that there, it just seems to be this blank wall that you're hitting. There are these odd things, the window, the cell phone's missing, that sort of stuff. And what, what kind of really frustrated me today is that I had bought the story that the family was telling, that they had been talking to the police, they'd given them all of this information. The police today came out and very forcefully said, they have not been talking to us the way they, they indicate. Um, when they were given the chance to talk to the mother, they said that, it, that it, during it she would become uncomfortable and she would stop the discussion. Again, and, you're not dealing with a very sophisticated mother or father of the child. Well, you what does also, sophistication you, but, have to do with just answering well, questions? You answer to a certain point. Police have a tendency, and police have to do their job. Police have a tendency sometimes to be accusatory. The mother said this morning that she was accused of murdering the child within an hour or two afterwards. It's a police tactic. Mm -hmm. The police also accused her of making a call at 2.30 in the morning. What the mother has said is the pho cell phones were disconnected. There was no way to make an outgoing call. If she knew that, she knew the police were playing with her. It may clam her up. I'm not saying it's right. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that she should stop talking to them because it's very important to keep them involved and have them follow the leads and try and eliminate yourself as a subject if you're not. Yeah. There are things here, though, as far as the police being called, they were called 12 minutes after the father got home and realized that the baby was missing. That's significant. Yeah. That's, showing, that's showing, oh my God, my baby's missing, let me call the police. From what I understand, they ran to the neighbors first to see if the baby may have been there, if the neighbor may have taken the baby. Yeah. But that's reasonable. Okay. Now, y'all keep saying, well, they're not sophisticated. I get the sense that people on the East Coast, whenever they hear people, you know, talk a little slower or aren't dressed quite as snazzy, go, well, they're not sophisticated. Again, these are regular folks. But, but so are, what makes them are, any different than anybody else? The answer to the question is in this particular case, what Joe was saying, I believe, is that he wants to see a good faith investigation. And he'll let them talk to the police as long as the police are talking to them in good faith. If you say, we want to talk to you because we want to find your baby and we want to help you find your baby, that's good faith. But if in the back of your mind you're thinking you're a person of interest and we think you did it and we want to talk to you and we're going to tell you it's because we want to find your baby, but it's really because we want to pin this on you, that's not good faith. And that's how they're feeling. It's not that they're unsophisticated, it's they're probably feeling backed to the wall. All right, we're I... going to take a quick break. More on this right afterwards. Glade plug-ins refills fit more holders. So you're free to fill your home with the Glade fragrance you love. Get the refills that fit Glade and Airwick holders. Glade plug-in scented oils. Release the magic. I'm constantly surprised at who I find on MyLife.com. And who finds me? 
Ever wonder who's searching for you? Go to mylife.com and see if someone is searching for you for free. At mylife.com, I make connections I can't find anywhere else. MyLife.com is the Internet's leading social site for both personal and work connections. Millions of people are joining each month. You could have messages waiting for you right now. Go to MyLife.com and see if someone is searching for you right now for free. You are a business pro. Your core competency is competency. And you rent from National, because only National lets you choose any car in the aisle and go. You can even take a full size or above and still pay the mid-size price. I'm getting an upgrade. As you wish, Business Pro, as you wish. Go National. Go like a pro. Now through January, earn a free day with every two rentals. Find out more at nationalcar.com. Americans are always ready to work hard for a better future. Since Ameriprise Financial was founded back in 1894, they've been committed to putting clients first. Helping generations through tough times, good times, never taking a bailout. There when you need them. Helping millions of Americans over the centuries. The strength of a global financial leader. The heart of a one-to-one -one relationship. Together. For your future. Freezer burn steak, $20. Dried out chicken, $15. Moldy cheese, $5. Stop throwing cash in the trash. Save money with the Food Saver System, the number one vacuum sealing system that keeps food fresh up to five times longer. Air can penetrate ordinary zipper bags. Food Saver bags keep air out, preventing freezer burn. With the Food Saver System, you can save up to $2,700 a year. Save now with the kitchen appliance that pays for itself in just weeks. Available wherever small kitchen appliances are sold. Do you have wrinkles and sagging skin? Would you like to remove years of aging from your face in about an hour? Now you can with Lifestyle Lift. This amazing procedure takes about one hour right in our office. See the difference immediately. No general or IV anesthesia. Return to your activities quickly. Call today to learn how you can receive a free laser treatment. That's right, a $950 value free for a limited time only. It gave me back all of my confidence. Call Lifestyle Lift now for your free laser treatment. The Michael Jackson trial is a drama regarding his children, his family, the empire around him, and the way that Michael Jackson became more of an object to those people that he trusted the most. I've followed Michael Jackson, as most Americans have, for my entire life. To see him die in this way, way too young, it was such a tragedy. What happened in that room? What happened to Michael Jackson? Well, baby Lisa's mom, Deborah Bradley, raised a lot of eyebrows when she admitted that she was drunk and potentially even blacked out the night that her baby daughter went missing. This is how she defended herself on Fox News Monday. Watch. She was sleeping. You know, I don't see the problem in me having my grown-up time. I take good care of my kids. I keep my house clean. I do their laundry. I kiss their boo-boos. I fix them food. I'm involved in their school stuff. I mean, to me, there's nothing wrong with me doing what I want to do after dark. I don't know about you. I was just furious after I heard that. Maybe I'm being too judgmental, but I'm like, Grown-up time doesn't necessarily mean, especially if you're a mom with a sleeping baby, that that means it's a free pass to go get drunk and possibly black out. Drove me crazy. Here to talk about this and tell me that, I, that I'm wrong, Bethany Marshall, psychoanalyst and a marriage and family therapist, and Rachel Brownell, author of The Mommy Doesn't Drink Here Anymore, that book right there. Thanks both for joining us. Bethany, is my reaction just, you know, out in the, you know, boonies? Edie, I happen to agree with you. This is a bad, bad mommy. And when I listen to this interview, she says there's nothing wrong with grown-up time. I hear all the characteristics of an addict because that's a, rational, a rationalization, right? So what do addicts do? They rationalize. They have lack of insight into possible negative destructive consequences to their action. They think nothing bad is gonna happen. They feel victimized by the life and, and by the world. Um, and this might be why we think that she needed to take a, a break from the interview process is that mm -hmm. she felt victimized by the police. But this mommy, after the fact, her baby is missing, possibly deceased, says there's nothing wrong with grown-up time. She's deep into her disease. And that grown-up time equates with 
getting a, a box of wine and sitting there and drinking it until you possibly, and you don't even know for sure, may have blacked out. Uh, Rachel, thank you for joining us because you really can help us, help me, understand th this other side and, and where this woman is coming from. You are so open and so frank in your book. Uh, what What is it about this mom that she's doing right now? Try, help me explain, because you, you say that you used to call yourself, what was it, cocktail mama? Yeah, definitely, and I understand, you know, I can certainly understand that the reaction that, you know, what the heck is she doing, her baby's missing and she's passed out and saying that's okay because she also does laundry, but, um, you know, I think it's important to point out that grown-up time for many people just means time to sit down and have a glass of tea and read a book or have one glass of wine or something, and I, um, I think she's using something that's socially acceptable, that sort of concept of your kids are in bed and you're taking it easy, and kind of, you know, she does sound like she is rationalizing a little bit. On the other hand, and um, it's always easy to pile on the mom in cases like this. And, you know, we don't really know what was happening there. We don't know the full story. Um, I can tell you that it's always a little more complicated than it first appears when it comes to moms and addiction. And you, you, and, um, certainly, I think, you certainly understand you know that. Help, help me understand. We are piling. Yep. Go ahead. We are piling on the mom because she says there's nothing wrong with grown-up time and her baby is missing. We're not talking the, the fact that her baby just had a minor accident or a toddler fell down and skinned its knees and now, now the child's in the hospital. Her child is missing and she's saying there is nothing wrong. That's a very serious thing. Yeah, we're watching the video right now of the, the store clip where she's you know, buying this box of wine that she then takes home. Rachel, right. you know, she, she is clearly a woman who's going through a lot in her life. Uh, she's married, right, right. Uh, estranged from her husband. I, I believe that they are in the process of getting a divorce. She has a child by him. That child's living with her. Her boyfriend also has a child with another woman. That child's living with him. And now they have this child, the boyfriend and, and uh, Bradley have this child together. There's a lot on her plate. D do sure. women, I mean, help me understand how women um, like yourself, you just sort of find yourself kind of going down that path where you don't even realize it, but all of a sudden, you're drinking way too much. Well, and I, I would like to respond to Bethany. I certainly understand, um, you know, I certainly understand piling on the mom or baby's missing and she's blacked out. That yeah. I get. Um, um, and, and of course, everyone, everyone understands that. That's why this is such a, you know, a riveting story. But what's true for a lot of us, what was true for me, is that I started out as kind of a normal drinker. I could have a glass of wine a night. And it's not like one day you wake up and you're drinking a whole bottle and you, you know, you see the whole progression. And right. of course, there are warning signs. And I think the difference between someone in recovery uh, from alcoholism and the someone who someone who is not is that series of denials, and they are either broken by a DUI or something terrible happening to your child, or someone else does an intervention. But a lot of us can go along when everyone else can see that we have a problem, we don't see it, and so it's not just a moral, you know, it's not a moral failing. Yeah. It's it's an inability to see ourselves That's, because right, we we used to drink normally, and now we don't, yes. and we don't. That's, I, Rachel, that's a very good point because I don't think that there's anybody who you know who goes to bed one night thinking I want to be an alcoholic when I wake up in the morning or I exactly. want to be a drug addict this when like I wake great. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. at the same time, <laughs> Bethany, you know there we are lots of adults around compare. her. Yes. I was yes, saying, there, there, um, where are the caretakers? Where is the family? Right. Where are the grandparents during this time? We saw with Casey and George, and our Cindy and George Anthony, that they preserved the child's room, hoping that the child would come home. This family has dismantled the child's room. And I want to make a comment about the children. She said it was grown up time. We know that from studies of adult children of alcoholics that when children are around an adult who drinks too much, it's enormously overwhelming and anxiety producing for them. And they grow into adults who take inordinate responsibility for everybody around them. Mm -hmm. They are control freaks. They can't trust anything that's not under their control and it's a massive defense against the helplessness of childhood and I don't think we can compare the, uh, a mother who has a normal progression of drinking too much with this mom yeah. who c c clearly was binge drinking with benzodiazepines which caused a major blackout. Bethany and Rachel we've got to take a break but you know if you think that this you. is bad you are gonna uh, not even believe your eyes video that is hard to even understand that's coming up after this. For fastidious librarian Emily Skinner, each 